when you first took over Playboy in 2009, the company was doing $240 million, pretty decent sized company, a publicly traded company. His success is making that company shrink into $140 million. So most CEOs would never dare to have a strategy of, I'm going to make my company as small as possible. But on the way, you made the company from losing $10 million to about $40 million of an EBITDA of probability. When the board hired me, uh, which was a very long recruiting process, the, which is maybe another story for another time, but the, I ultimately accepted the role and I kept getting asked as the process went down, well, you've had time to think about this, you've talked, you've talked to the board many times, you've met with Hef a couple of times, you must have some idea of what you're going to do. And even though I had one small idea, which was to outsource the operations of the magazine, which was kind of a no-brainer decision, I didn't know anything about the adult TV business, the radio business, the digital subscription business. I'd never, uh, even though I've been in almost every aspect of media business, I'd not been, I'd never run a significant consumer magazine. And so from my point of view, I needed to go there and actually meet all the executives, talk to people uh, to figure out what the strategy was. Playboy makes up for its inefficiency by being ineffective. And you know, it's it just true. Uh, because we just we were losing, we were just not big and we didn't have core competencies. We were trying to be too many things. We were spreading the brand everywhere and we didn't have the scale to attract the very best talent. We were a price taker uh, from every vendor and distributor. And so it was clear that we just needed to associate with bigger, more powerful companies. And I said, if you decide that I'm the wrong guy you know, to lead that, I think I've done a nice job of dissecting this, uh, I'll understand. You focus on some iconic brands in, in your lifetime. I'm, it's from Columbia House to, to Playboy. Um, it's, just, it's just incredible. Um, what do you think the role of a CEO should be? To me, the most important thing that a CEO does is understand the harsh realities of the business that he's operating or she's operating. And you cannot do that in a vacuum, no matter how smart or how well educated you are. You only understand the business that you're leading by going out and talking to people that are actually doing the work, talking to your competitors, talking to people in adjacent industries, talking to your vendors and then ask, asking them questions and learning. I was at this company for 13 years, my first job of, in, in, in commerce, at five different owners. And I think I only fired two people that entire time in that 13 years. I interviewed every non-exempt, or, or every exempt role. So every one of the, the assistants I interviewed to build this company from a quarter, from 25 million in revenues to a half a billion. Everyone thinks that Playboy, and, and the magazine says entertainment for men, but the reality we learned is that women like our brand more than men. Women do not want to be associated with the sex, but women want to be associated with the sexy. So when you change the brand, the brand became very, very strong. I was shocked um, that the, the presence of Playboy at the, at the nightclubs. Like how, how important is the international market? We make more than all of our profit outside the United States. So if I add up everything that we do in the US, we lose money here. And we, we do a third. Now this is a, this is a staggering statistic, statistic, but it speaks to globalization and, and Americana that one third of our licensing business is in China, $27 million last year, and we've never had a media property in China. No magazine, no Facebook page, no website, no TV channel, no radio, nothing. And yet we sold $27 million, we, had, we generated $27 million in licensing revenue, and that translates to about $450 million of actual consumer spending. And it's in China. The, the Playboy brand in, in China represents a, a pathway into middle class. It's it's what the our brand tracking says there. It's almost all male, 
uh, apparel and accessories, leather goods, shoes, etc. And uh, what Playboy represents to the male Chinese buyer is that they are moving into middle class in China. It's not about sex. I say business is about people and it's about numbers. But the people matter more because they are who produce the numbers. And so I always tell my head of human resources that she has the hardest job in the company because I think I'm better at her job than, than her. Because the only functional area of the business that I actually micromanage is the human capital part. I am animal on having the right people in the right job.